What's up y'all, Logan Parker and Mike Heindel with Heirloom Builders. Today we're timber framing with uh, heavy timbers, post and beam style joinery. Um, the difference between timber framing and post and beam is that these joints are made with steel connections, steel knife plates and galvanized carriage bolts instead of dovetail wood and wood peg joinery. Um, if you ask me, I think this is actually a much stronger joint and it's a little bit easier to assemble. Uh, we've gone ahead and set our knife plate in the joint, drilled the holes, and Mike, go ahead and pull that out so we can show everybody what this knife plate connection actually looks like. This is an 80 pound piece of steel. It's a half inch plate welded on the corner with three quarter inch holes set in two inches from the edge. And we're gonna be able to connect not only this post to this beam right here. This beam goes 24 feet. It's a 10 by 18 beam. This thing weighs like 800 pounds. This post is a 10 by 10 pine beam. That thing weighs like probably 450, 500 pounds. Um, and then watch Mike put this thing in there. So this is why they call it a knife plate because it's, we cut that groove with a chainsaw and our chainsaw is like five sixteenths of an inch. So we had to make two passes. We'll make a video about that, show you all about that later. But look at that. It fits in there nice and snug. We got our holes to line up. And Mike's coming from the outside with the carriage bolts so that our siding can go over nice and flush. The benefit of this carriage bolt, by the way, is that it doesn't have a hex head um, and a washer. The head itself is kind of acts like a washer and it's got this square end right here so that once you drive it into the wood, the square peg doesn't fit in the round hole. So you beat that in and it holds the bolt steady while you spin the nut on the other end. Let's show them what we mean, Mike. Look at that. Oh man, that's solid looking. Man, I grabbed wrong size nuts. <laughs> Great on live. That's okay. I'm just showing. Oh, let's go ahead and get another one yeah. in there. Make sure everything lines up. That looks good. Hey Ben, can you go grab some three quarter nuts out of that job box? And look at that, even with just those two bolts right there, we have an insanely strong connection with a half inch piece of steel. Um, you might be wondering why this one over here hangs down low. Um, we've got a loft floor beam, a six by 12, that's got to tie into this. And because it's a, because this joint is kind of a, a multi-directional joint. That's why we have to weld all this steel in different directions um, so that we're not welding it on, on, on site. We basically get these steel knife plates fabricated um, in our metal shop, uh, our buddy's metal shop of Beechwood Metalworks. They do an amazing job cutting this stuff with a laser jet so that all these holes are not only exactly where they need to be, but each one of these knife plates, we got a whole pallet full of them for this wedding barn here they're all the same exact thing. So what we were able to do is use um, basically the same one on the opposite end to mark as a template for our holes while we kept this knife plate in there, drilled the holes, make sure everything lined up. Um, and it's, it's freaking perfect. This is, this is really an amazing connection right here. Look at that, we got four three quarter inch carriage bolts going through, threading through a steel knife plate that's gonna hold this joint together. Uh, a little bit more about this joint right here. Um, this 10 by 18 is a kiln dried piece of pine. So it's gonna have a tendency, even still being kiln dried, it still has a tendency to expand and contract over time. So what we've done is held our bolt pattern from the middle of the beam and down. 
so that if any expansion and contraction happens, it happens from the top down instead of shrinking um, from both sides and, and cracking the wood. Um, another thing about this joinery here is that we don't want to completely rely on, on the steel connection right there to hold our beam. So what we've done is created a three inch ledge. We cut in kind of a half dovetail three inch ledge right there and tapered it to nothing on the post. So again, our, our beam could expand and contract. If we, if we cut a, a square notch in like this, then if that beam expanded once it sits out in the open air and gains some moisture, it could crack that post. So being that we cut, um, cut a miter on this 10 by 18, right there, if it expands, it just goes into the open air um, and it doesn't bind on that post. So I'm really stoked on this joint right here. This is uh, super cool, super strong, and a little bit easier than actually doing all the timber framing. Um, we, we don't have a, a warehouse that we can actually do all these joints, so we're doing them on site right here. And uh, fortunately, uh, we're coming up with some pretty good joinery just on site, so I'm stoked. I hope you are. If you learned a little bit of something, smash that like button. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be following this whole process and uh, we're going to be showing you tips and tricks on how we build this barn and, and, you know, post and beam specifically on this barn and other general carpentry tricks along the way. So as always, y'all, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.